Good morning, everybody. It is so good to be with you this morning, this Sunday, Easter morning. Glad to be worshiping with you this day. I am going to invite you to stand in a little bit before when uh, we start with the hymn, but I just wanted to give you some, um, just some information. Everybody is welcome to come and cross, uh, to uh, flower the cross. We will do that during the Gloria, so feel welcome whether you have um, flowers with you or not. There are buckets and baskets with flowers so that you can flower the cross. Also know that in the Episcopal Church, everybody who is baptized is welcome to come to the table. It is God's table, not our table. So just know that you are welcome to join us for uh, communion. If you are eating gluten-free, we have gluten-free. If you would prefer a blessing, come before and uh, cross your arms in front of you, and that will give us the signal that you would prefer a blessing. So excited again. And happy Easter to everybody. Please stand as you're able. your holy name 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of heavenly forces will prepare for all peoples a rich feast, a feast of choice wines, of select foods rich in flavor, of choice wines well refined. He will swallow up on this mountain the veil that is veiling all peoples, the shroud and shrouding, and shrouding all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The Lord God will wipe tears from every face. He will remove his people's disgrace from off the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. They will say on that day, look, this is our God, for whom we have waited, and he has saved us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I want to call your attention to the good news that I preach to you, which you also received and in which you stand. You are being saved through it if you hold on to the message I preach to you, unless somehow you believed it for nothing. I passed on to you as most important what I also received. Christ died for our sins in line with the scriptures. He was buried and he rose on the third day in line with the scriptures. He appeared to Cephas, then to the Twelve, and then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at once. Most of them are still alive to this day, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me, as if I were born at the wrong time. I'm the least important of the apostles. I don't deserve to be called an apostle because I harassed God's church. I am what I am by God's grace, and God's grace hasn't been for nothing. In fact, I have worked harder than all the others. That is, it wasn't me, but the grace of God that is with me. So then, whether you heard the message from me or them, this is what we preach, and this is what you have believed. The word of the Lord.
in the morning of the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. She ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. Peter and the other disciple left to go to the tomb. They were running together, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and was first to arrive at the tomb. Bending down to take a look, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he didn't go in. Following him, Simon Peter entered the tomb and saw the linen cloths lying there. He also saw the face cloth that had been on Jesus' head. It wasn't with the other clothes, but was folded up in its own place. Then the other disciple, the one who arrived at the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They didn't yet understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to the place where they were staying. Mary stood outside near the tomb, crying. As she cried, she bent down to look into the tomb. She saw two angels dressed in white, seated where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and one at the foot. The angels asked her, Woman, why are you crying? She replied, They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they've put him. As soon as she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Don't hold on to me, for I haven't yet gone up to my father. Go to my brothers and sisters and tell them, I'm going up to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene left and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. Then she told them what he said to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs> That's right. Oh, it is good, good to be here. And, you know, every year we do this, we celebrate this Easter. We know the story. We know he just didn't rise this morning or last night, right? We know that because we've been at this for thousands of years. But why does the church remind us year after year after year after year of this glorious day of resurrection? Why do we have to be reminded that Jesus is risen? Why? Because we forget. We forget that on that glorious morning, we were liberated from all bondage. Nothing, nothing and no one can separate us from God's love. Nothing, nothing and no one can keep us tied and not be able to be free and live that full, glorious, magnificent life that Jesus wants for every single one of us. Nothing we forget. We forget. 
But that is the truth, brothers and sisters, is that we are free. Because not even, here's the beautiful thing, not even our worst fear, which is death, will keep us from God's love. We have been liberated from death. We are free. So what could that mean for us, this liberated life? How would we live? We were asked this question last night by Father Paul. How would we live if we truly believed that we were free, that nothing and no one would separate us from God's life, God's love, not even death? How would we live? And all we have to do is call on Jesus. Mary says, where is he? What have you done? And the moment she asks for Jesus, he appears. He appears. In this worst moment, he appears. And it took her a while to figure out who he was. But she got there. And you know, and I know, that we've got there. (laughs) And there have been moments when we are, where are you, Jesus? You told me you weren't going to leave me behind. You told me you'll be there for me in my hard times. Where are you, Jesus? This is too much. I can't handle this. Jesus is there. We may not always see Jesus. We may not always recognize Jesus. But Jesus is there, just like he was for Mary. And so the other thing I think we are reminded of today is that Jesus died for everybody. Everybody. No exceptions. What does this mean, everybody? Everybody? Really? Everybody? Yes. Jesus died for Pilate. Jesus died for the religious leaders that handed him over to Pilate. Jesus died for those Roman soldiers that nailed him to the cross. Everybody. Jesus died for everybody. So I don't know about you, but I'm going through a list of people in my head that I'm thinking, please, Jesus, not that person. Let's be honest, right? Let's be honest. But let's remember today, this morning, that Jesus died for everybody, for everybody's liberation, for everybody's freedom, so that no one feels so tight and so bound up and so fearful and so afraid that we do terrible things. We do terrible things because we don't feel loved, because we don't feel worthy, because we are afraid that not for me. But if we remember that Jesus died for everybody, for me, for you, for you, for you. Where are the cameras? For you and everybody out there. Everybody. No exceptions. How would we live? And here's the other thing, is that this liberation and this freedom is not just for us as individuals, but it's for us as a community. If the entire community felt liberated and free, 
how would we live together? Because Jesus said to us, that last commandment, love everyone as I have loved you. And we know how much Jesus loves us. He was willing to give up his life for all of us. That's the kind of love he's inviting us to live, to love ourselves and to love one another. And so here's the beautiful good news about this. If we live into this free life without feeling constricted or afraid, then there is a lot of hope. There's a lot of hope because nothing can keep us from loving one another. And so that fear that we read about in the papers and on Facebook and on other social media, that we are so separated. These political divides are so wide. These chasms of how people see one another. We all live in our own little bubbles and we will not be able to break through because we are just so separated and so into our little bubbles and the country and the environment and we won't be able to come together to do something for the good of all it's a lie because we know the truth we know the truth that jesus died for everyone and jesus has put in us this love and all jesus is asking is to look and to see one another as jesus has seen us to love one another as Jesus has loved us. And my friends, nothing and no one can separate us from that love. And that is good news. Amen. 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 <clears throat> I invite you all to stand so we can renew our baptismal vows together. Through the Paschal Mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and all his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you affirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ the Son of God. He was Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of us. Will you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim, by word and example, the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace? among all people, and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. 
May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us give thanks for the victory that Jesus Christ has won by his death and resurrection with the prayers of the people. It is for us that he triumphed. We offer our prayers in the joy of Christ's resurrection, saying, Alleluia! Christ is risen. Risen Lord, we offer our prayers for all members of your holy church as we seek to fulfill your mission of hope and reconciliation. May we truly serve you in our vocations and ministry in the world. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. We pray for your guidance to all nations in the way of justice, peace, and truth. Inspire those who hold authority to be mindful of those who live with violence, oppression, war, and generational trauma. May their leadership lead to reconciliation and everlasting peace. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. We pray for compassion for those who suffer from sickness, grief, or turmoil. May they find strength in your presence and your healing power and be restored to health and joy through your gracious light. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. We pray for your compassion and grace to strengthen this community in Christ's self-giving love. Give us the grace to live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. Hallelujah. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. At this time, we offer our special prayers, and we begin with remembering the deaths, the injuries that are caused by war, the families who suffer from loss, 
from worry, from fear, especially in Gaza, Ukraine, and Haiti. We pray for families who are under stress. Let us pray for a growing congregation, which is not in your bulletin. So we'll skip that. Let us pray for David, China, Karen, Frank, Doug, Sandra, John, Meredith, the Pelletier family, Leslie, Lisa, and the presiding bishop, Michael Curry. Are there others whom we need to name at this time? Emily, I'm sorry, I can't always hear what you say to repeat. Emily, Emily I got Emily. Okay. Yes. That's okay. We include those in our hearts. But at this time, we want to say a special prayer for Lisa, if you'll come forward. Lisa is facing a medical procedure tomorrow. Wednesday. Let's not hurry it up, right? <laughs> okay, we are, for those who might like to see the prayer we're going to offer, uh, if you can go to page 459, 459 of the Book of Common Prayer, and we will do the second prayer for someone who's uh, going to have an operation. Strengthen your servant, Lisa, O oh God, to do what she has to do and bear what she has to bear, that accepting your healing gifts through the skill of surgeons and nurses, she may be restored to usefulness in your world with a thankful heart. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. We also want to remember and lift up our prayers for all of our loved ones who are on the very long list that the Daughters of the King maintain and for whom they pray daily. Mm -hmm. We also lift up our prayers for those who have died recently, especially Pauline and Charlie. And we want to pray, oh, on that same, uh, that same page on the Book of Common Prayer is the prayer for strength and confidence. If you can find it, you can join us and say that prayer. Page 459. 459. Together. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, Comfort and relieve your sick servants and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we get to do the fun part. We pray, we lift up thanksgivings for birthdays, especially for Catherine, who's an April Fool's daughter. <laughs> But no April Fool, she has reached the grand age of 82, and I know, I believe she's going to reach a lot more. Yay! <laughs> the prayer for a birthday is on page 830, and it's prayer number 50. Page 830. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant Catherine as she begins another year and grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
I swear she's the youngest one. To you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. I will say she's the youngest looking 82 year old I've ever known. Okay. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Monday, but after Sunday, I'm still walking on clouds. And on days like this, maybe I'll get tired around Wednesday. We'll see. Thank you, thank you all. This is wonderful, wonderful service. And thank you all for being here on this beautiful day. We have a couple of announcements, but most importantly, we have thank yous. Thank yous, thank yous, thank yous. Lots of gratitude. So grateful for all the people who put all this beautiful, um, prepared the, sac the, the sanctuary the music, the food, just hours of time and dedication and love that was um, given to the church during these last couple of weeks. So very grateful for all of you. Lots of extra reading, so lots of more lozenges was needed and extra waters and all that. So no, thank you seriously very, very much for all that you do. It makes this so much fun and so easy. We get here and it's ready to go and look at this gorgeous cross now, right? So thank you so much. And then a couple of things that I do want to lift up because we do have some wonderful things coming up after Easter. Because, right, like Easter is not like, oh, that's it, done, be over. No, no, Easter is like 50 days. So we got lots of wonderful things to celebrate. Right after this, there's going to be an Easter egg hunt. It's an Easter egg hunt. And there's no age limit. Just that, you know. I got my basket, so okay, so you know, nobody's excluded from the Easter egg hunt either. Um, and, and thank you for those of you who shared uh, Easter cookies, there'll be cookie, cookies and coffee outside. Two things that are coming up that I want to lift up. One is the men's group. Matthew, one of our members, is putting together a, a men's group, so I invite those of you who are interested in that. Um, and so it's, there's a flyer out there, it's in our newsletter, Matthew's Contact information is available to you if you have any questions about that. And then the other thing is just going to be a financial literacy seminar on April 21st after our 2 o'clock service. So for people who are interested in learning about banking and, and, and those kinds of things, some, some, the first one will be very basic, but then it will get a little bit, there will be more to it. Primarily for people who um, haven't figured out how to balance your budget, how to you know, open up a bank account, right? For some people, it's like, oh, please, Mother Minerva, that's just so easy. But just remember, we have a diverse community in our congregation that come from other countries and who have different experiences with money and with financial institutions. And so they'll, they'll, it's an opportunity for us, all of us, to get some information around how that is and how that works here. Brothers and sisters, let us with gladness present the offerings and oblation of our life and labor to the Lord.
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is a true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at that last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ, as our Savior, as, and now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world remembering that Christ died for everyone. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia.